wonderful Savior. And He really wants to save you. Wonderful Savior. Turn to Him now as your Savior and your Lord. For He came to earth to die on your record. And have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Hello again, and welcome back to another set of Gospel Gems. We're going through the Bible alphabet, and today we've reached the letter D. And as we do, we're going to read a verse from the Bible right at the start that starts with that particular letter. And so we're going to read our verse that starts with the letter D. It's from this book here, which is the Psalms. The Psalms is perhaps the biggest book in the Bible. There are 150. And if you think it sounds like a strange name, Psalms, you don't pronounce the P. It just means songs. So this is the song book of the Bible, 150 songs. And when we come to Psalm 37, the 37th Psalm and verse 4, it says this, Delight thyself, also in the Lord, found in Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. I wonder what you delight in. I wonder what your big thing is. Maybe it's sport. Uh, some young people are mad about sport. Uh, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's music to you. That's what you delight in. Maybe there's something else as well, but... There's all sorts of things. Well, the Bible tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord. In actual fact, in verse number 3 of Psalm 37, it tells us firstly to trust in the Lord. You see, we can't delight in the Lord until we first trusted in the Lord. Once we've trusted in him, we can delight in the Lord. You'll find so many wonderful things about the Lord Jesus. You will delight in him. And then in verse number 5, it says we're to commit our way unto the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. And so once we've trusted in him, once we're delighting in him, we can start following him. So welcome to the letter D. D, we're going to find, is for a boy called David. And well, hopefully you know the story about David and the giant. We are going to think about that, but we'll think about some other things as well. And then we're going to think about a lovely lady called Dorcas. She's found in the new part of the Bible. We call that the New Testament. She had two names, actually. She was called Tabitha as well as Dorcas. And then we're going to think about that great big word. Look at that. Deliverance. It means to be saved. That's going to be our verse, except it's not going to be deliverance. It's going to be deliver. So that's our stories for D. Well, what about David? Well, David was the youngest of several sons and his dad had a strange name. He was called Jesse. And one day an old man came. He was God's prophet. He was called Samuel. And he came to Jesse's house with a message from God that one of Jesse's sons was going to be the next king. Well, Jesse just presumed it was going to be the oldest boy that he'd got, possibly the strongest, possibly the best looking. And Samuel looked at him and said, no, it's not him. God doesn't look on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. And finally, Jesse brought David to the old man Samuel. And when Samuel saw David, God said to him, this is he. He's the one. He's going to be the king of Israel. 
I have chosen him. That's amazing. Nobody else really looked at David. He just looked after his dad's sheep. He played a harp. Maybe he wasn't much good at sport or anything else at school. But he was the one. You know what, boys and girls, young people, anybody else listening, I'm delighted to know that God doesn't just call rich people and important people, but God wants all people to be saved. It doesn't matter whether we're the smallest or the weakest or the biggest or the tallest or the strongest or the richest or the poorest. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's just you and me. And so God chose young David. And David was going to be the next king. And he was going to be a very, very good king as well. Well, David one day went to visit his brothers. His brothers had joined the army. There was a big battle going on at a place called Elah. Well, every day, the giant, he was called Goliath. He was about nine and a half feet tall. Well, for those who don't know me, I'm pretty tall. I'm six and a half feet tall. Well, half an inch short. So Goliath was three feet taller than me. And he was huge. And he came out every day really to try to frighten the armies of Israel, who were really the armies of God. Give me a man that we may fight against him, he would say. Well, David, he heard the giant and he saw the giant and he was the only one who was prepared to fight the giant. And the giant came with a spear and a sword and with a shield. And David just said, I come to thee in the name of the Lord whom thou hast defied. And David just had a shepherd's sling and he just had a stone. And he put the stone in the sling and he slang the sling around his head and the stone went flying out of the sling and it went through the sky and it hit the giant's skull. And the giant went ooh and collapsed to the ground. Well, David took the giant sword and I'm not going to tell you what he did next. But because God was with David, David was able to defeat the giant. Well, one giant we can't defeat on our own is the giant of sin. It controls the way we think and it controls the way we act and it controls who we are. And I'm thankful that God sent, some, sent someone far stronger than me to deal with the problem of sin. He sent his son. And the Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to save people like you and me. Well, David did become the king. But before he did, he had a few problems with the king that was there. He was called King Saul. King Saul, he had a son. He was called Jonathan. Now, Jonathan knew that he would never be king. He would never follow in his father's footsteps. Jonathan knew that his father had really messed up. You see, King Saul was a big man. And he had big ideas about himself and, sadly, very little ideas about God. He was a king after man's own heart. David was going to be a king after God's own heart because David had small ideas about himself and big ideas about God. Well, Jonathan and David made a covenant. That word just means that they became friends. They made a promise to each other that they would be with each other. Now, David, well, he was a good man. Jonathan was too, but Jonathan made some mistakes. And one mistake was when David was hiding in the cave, Jonathan went back to the city where his father was. And sadly, in a battle, Jonathan and his father lost their lives. You see, it's good once we are saved, once we are Christians, to make sure we have good friends. Friends that will help us. 
Don't choose friends that will take you away from the things of God and the things of the Lord. Don't choose friends that will swear and steal and not be a help to you. Choose those who love and enjoy the things that you enjoy. That enjoy the things of the Bible and the things of the Lord. So you've got to be careful. But the Bible talks about a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Well, that's really the Lord Jesus. But it's good to have good friends because we can encourage each other and help each other. And it's not always easy being a Christian. So that's David, a very, very brief story of the life of David. Now, D is for David, but it's also for the word deliver. And here's our vital verse, our memory text. Deliver my soul, O Lord. And this is found in Psalm 120, verse number 2. We're back to the Psalms again. Remember the first one that we read? Delight thyself also in the Lord, from Psalm 37 and verse 4. Well, here is Psalm 120, verse 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord. Now that word deliver just means save. Save my soul, O Lord. Now I've put a life ring there just simply because if you fell into the river or you fell into the sea, well, if you were anything like me anyway, you'd make a lot of noise. If it was me, I'd be shouting, help, help, because I'd want someone to come and rescue me. I'd want someone to throw that life ring into me that I might be able to grab hold of it and they could pull me out and so that word deliver just means save my soul O lord there's a verse that's in the bible three times and it says this whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and that just means if we ask and we're sorry for our sin and we trust him, he'll save us. So here's a verse. Deliver my soul, O Lord. Let's all say it together. I'm going to count to three, and on three we'll say it. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliver my soul, O Lord. Psalm 120, verse 2. I think that was very good. Let's try it again. Are you ready? After three. One, two, three. Deliver my soul, O Lord. Psalm 120, verse 2. Excellent. Now, you keep going back over that psalm, over that verse, in that psalm, and you see if you can't remember it. One more time, after three. One, two, three. Deliver my soul, O Lord. Psalm 120, verse 2. So we found already that D stands for David and it stands for that big word that we had at the start, deliverance or deliver. But it also stands for a lovely lady called Dorcas. Well, there's Dorcas in the green. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9 that she was full of good works. So she was. She was a delightful lady. She was a Christian. Christians should be full of good works. Christians should have lots and lots of things that they want to do that are good. Christians shouldn't be doing things that aren't very nice. And so she was full of good works. What she used to do was she used to knit things, sew things, make things. She's made these clothes here. Maybe that red cloth, red uh, dress there is for that little girl. Maybe this sort of uh, bluey green with the red is for the lady who's holding it. I don't know. But Dorcas, she did good things because once we're saved, we live a different life. We're no longer full of self and full of sin. We shouldn't be. We should be very full of good works. We want to help others and encourage others. And that's what Dorcas did. But one day, something very sad happened to Dorcas. 
she was sick and she died. Well, you see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's why people die. Very sad. Famous people die. Sometimes you might read in the newspapers or see on the news or hear on the news that somebody famous has died. They might have been a politician. They might have been a king or a queen. They might have been some famous actor or some famous sportsman. But they've died. And all people die. Because the Bible says that's the result of sin. But it's good to know that when we die, we go to heaven. And Dorcas, she was a Christian, but she died. And her friends called for a man called Peter. He was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus. And they called Peter to come and to see uh, Dorcas. And Peter came. And they showed Peter all the different things that Dorcas had made. And Peter did something amazing. He prayed to God. And God did something amazing. Because God raised her up. He gave her new life. She opened her eyes. And she sat up. Because Peter had prayed. She got new life. And a new start. Well you know boys and girls. There's a verse in the Bible. It's found in John's Gospel. And chapter 3. And it's the words of the Lord Jesus. And he said, ye must be born again. You must have new life. You must have a new start. And we get a new start and we get a new life when we trust in the Lord Jesus. When we believe that he died upon the cross to save us from our sin. When we believe that he rose again to make us fit for heaven. When we believe that his precious blood can cleanse us from everything that's wrong in our life, we can be born again. And when we're born again, we get a whole new life. And so we want to start living for God. We never had a thought about living for God until we were born again. But once we get that new life, we want to start living for God. And so D tells us about David, a boy who God chose who decided he was going to serve God, and he did serve God. D is for deliverance, or deliver, deliver my soul, O Lord. And D is for Dorcas, a lady who served God, and died, and then was raised back to life, and continued to serve the Lord. That's our letter D. Come back again, and we'll go on to the next letter of the alphabet next time. Thanks for stopping by at Gospel Gems today.